You are listening to African Father in America podcast by Simon Javano Kelo live from Seattle, Washington, USA. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for another session of the Daily African Proverbs. My name is Simon Javan Okelo. I am in Seattle, Washington, and uh, I am from Kenya, Kisumu, Kenya, originally. Uh, I am excited to be here uh, every day. I open this room and I also live stream uh, the Daily African Proverbs on Clubhouse, on, on, on YouTube. So uh, I see that we have a few people who are just joining us on YouTube as well. Uh, we have an amazing proverb from Nigeria that says, the archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains con constant in his hands. Uh, I'll just say it one more time. The archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains con constant in his hands. Yeah, this one is the one of the longest proverbs I've ever picked for the daily African proverbs, and uh, even reading all of it uh, is is it's, it it sounds a little long, but I love it. You know, I didn't select today's proverb; it was selected by Nkem. Uh, Nkem Jika is uh, one of the people that are helping me curate the daily African proverbs. Uh, when I when I looked at this proverb personally, I was just thinking about how we value the people that are close to us. And a lot of the time when we are still, um, you know, with people that we care about, we don't really see the value of these people, whether it's our siblings, whether it's our parents, whether it's, uh, you know, our spouses. We don't really, really see how amazing and how great, uh, and how lucky we are that we have those people in our lives. So a lot of the time, we, we take them for granted until we don't have them, until we lose them. That's when, you know, we begin to realize how, you know, how amazing, you know, for example, for me, I, my mother is a, is a great example uh, when it comes to what this proverb represents. But I want to I want to open space for any one of you who have joined me in the room to also join me on stage and share your thoughts uh, about today's proverb from Nigeria. Again, the proverb says, "The archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands." Uh, I would love for you to join me and share your interpretation of this proverb as well. Uh, I'm just so happy that uh, you're all here. I want to give a big shout out to Henrietta, who was, uh, I think, the very first person to join us today. And uh, I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Joseph for joining us. Uh, Sarah, it's nice to see you. Uh, and also Zizi, uh, I'm just grateful. Feel free to raise your hand. Uh, at 6.30, we will be closing hand raising. Um, I also just want to say to all those who are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for your continued support. I urge you to leave your comments with what this proverb means to you. Again, the proverb is, the archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands. Enkem, it's nice to see you as well. Thank you for picking this proverb. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I want to actually you know, if you're ready and came, um, you know, you, because you're the first one on stage, just share with us uh, first why you picked this proverb for today and also uh, what your interpretation for this proverb is. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon. Um, yes, I thought this was powerful because wisdom is the application of knowledge. And so um, I think someone who is wise is able to solve a difficult problem because they have life experience and 
they've learned how to apply knowledge through going through difficult situations. And so in their toolbox will be tools that help them adapt to life and become more flexible. I always try to use the word um, for me. Um, I'm connected uh, deeply to the Bible because it's pretty much what gives me wisdom. And one verb or one proverb says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom um, and the knowledge of uh, his holiness is understanding. And um, in Proverbs also, it mentions that in times of adversity, um, if we faint, then that means our strength is small. And it also mentions in that same chapter that one increases in strength when they increase in knowledge. And so the more that we increase in knowledge, we increase in strength because we apply um, our knowledge in difficult situations and we can adapt when difficult times come and can plant ourselves um, in the ground knowing that we can overcome. This is in Kimjika, and I'm done speaking. Thank you, Simon. Wow, thank you so much, Enkem. I just loved um, how you shared with us that, uh, you know, the more knowledge you have, the, the more uh, stronger you become. I loved that. Thank you for being here. Easy, it's nice to see you. Uh, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, Dr. Kisha, it's really nice to see you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Henrietta, feel free to come on stage. Uh, Zizi, JCO, feel free to come on stage. We are discussing an amazing proverb from Nigeria, and we just heard from uh, Nkem Jika. I would encourage you to follow the African Father in America pod, uh, Club if you're not following it yet. It's also up my, the name of my podcast, actually. And uh, all the sessions from this room are normally published. Uh, you know, on all podcasting platforms right after this conversation. So uh, feel free to check out the conversations that happened yesterday and the day before. Um, but today's proverb is from Nigeria, and uh, it says, The archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands. <laughs> Share with us your interpretation, uh, Easy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Simon. Again, it's always a pleasure to be here. So uh, this proverb is quite interesting. And when I was uh, looking at it and I was trying to think about it, the thing that came into my mind is uh, like, for instance, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm a visual artist, I'm a digital artist. And every time, you know, like when I'm talking with people who are getting to like know my work, uh, and one of the questions that always pops up is like what's your like what's what's your best work or what's your best piece of work or like what's uh do you have like a favorite piece that you've ever created and more often than not i find myself to be in a difficult place to answer that question because i always feel like uh it, it's very difficult for me to say I have this one particular piece that is, uh, that's my favorite. I feel like every piece that I have created has played a certain role um, in making me the person that I am uh, as an artist, as a creator. And it's also played a specific role in regards to uh, you know, the, the impact that I intended it to, to have, you know, to, to my audience or to whoever who, who follows my work. So I, I don't have a specific piece, you know, that I can point and say, like, this is my favorite out of everything that I've ever created in my time. Uh, so, so basically, like, that's how I compare uh, this, uh, uh, this proverb. And, and then also, like, I, like, uh, I'd also like I like to look at it from the perspective of a parent who basically uh, says, you know, talks to the kids and he, and he says, all my kids, uh, uh, I love them the same way, you know. And it it's almost, uh, 
I find like it has a, a little bit of similarities with yesterday's proverb where we were talking about uh, everything having its own place in the world and everything having its own responsibility. I kind of find like there are almost similarities with uh, this proverb here. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's my interpretation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Easy. Yeah, I love your interpretation too. Um, I didn't know you're an artist. I would love to talk to you about that more sometime. Where are you based, by the way? Yeah, Jovan, I'm, uh, I'm based in Nairobi, Kenya currently. Uh, but I also, I'm based in between Nairobi and, and, and the U.S., Virginia to be specific. But currently I'm in Nairobi. Yeah, that's very nice, man. I hope we can we can stay connected, uh, and I can't wait to follow up with you. Uh, and I really, really thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, here consistently for the daily African proverbs. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we do this every day. Uh, we do this um, at six a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you know, whenever I'm in this room, I, I feel that I'm making my ancestors proud because these proverbs that we are discussing are not new. They've always been discussed, uh, you know, from my mom to my mom's parents. And all of us have, you know, such connections to African proverbs. So whenever we are gathered like this, I just feel like we are doing the right thing, uh, even if it's just for one hour only. So welcome. Uh, remember to follow the African Father in America Club and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Simon Java Nukelo. We are live streaming there at the moment. Um, I want to pass the microphone to Joseph. Uh, Kafunda, who is an amazing brother, is a travel and uh, tourist guide in Southern Africa, uh, and is very, very passionate about, you know, sharing African untold stories. Share with us your interpretation of today's proverb, brother. Uh, it says, the archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Simon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joseph Kofunda, currently in Namibia. Uh, like Simon said, I'm a very passionate person about travel and tourism. That's the only uh, daily proverbs that I have known. It's that when I travel, I don't need a therapy because uh, traveling healed me and uh, it's encouraged me to get to know more about what is outside world. And uh, thank you, Simon, for the invite again. And it's always nice to be here and share with everybody how we understand and how we can be able to translate the African proverbs. Because to me, African proverbs are actually uh, uh, untold stories, stories that we are only sharing them now, but they were not shared before. It's, 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 it's part and parcel of our culture. If we can stop telling proverbs, that means we are killing our own uh, African or diasporan uh, uh, culture. For me, the proverbs today touch my heart because I live in a country where uh, you find the first hunters and gatherers uh, living and still wander around. And the fact that they cannot be able to have that bow and arrow into their hands, it's really a painful because the Bushmen or the Sun people today are not allowed to hunt. Because based on the hunt, the hunting that they were doing, that's how they discover and they share their proverbs. But now the thing is, how can we be able to bring those proverbs back into their own hands? That is, that is really what I feel like we should allow our people to continue preaching and telling people each others about the proverbs, and tell the people about the untold stories share the stories that were there before and that's not been shared today. So it's really, uh, it's touched my heart. When I just read, about, when I heard about it, I was like going back directly to my people that I, I always uh, talk to and I'm related to them because my grandmother is actually from that side. So it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's something that we need to, to change. The narrative need to change. And I think, this is the time that we have to change because if we don't change uh, now, it's, it's going to be a story that will never be told. So proverbs for me are a way of knowledge. They bring me a lot of knowledge into me and they make my brain work because every time it's twisted, 
So you have to put it into the right perspective so that you can be able to understand exactly what it was saying. And it's most of the time educational because we, we speak about educations, but why we're getting education is because we want to get more knowledgeable. And more knowledgeable, we can get it when we share the African proverbs. If we don't share the African proverbs, that means we will become a future African that does not know anything about where we come from, where we are going. My grandmothers, I still remember up to today, she keep on telling me a pot is not something that a man should be able to open. And that's an African proverb. She know why she say that. So it's, it's, it's a tradition, it's a culture. And if we can revive that, Simon, let me compliment you by bringing up this uh, room because it's, it's actually remind us and it's bring our roots back from uh, where we have hidden it. Although we have come to, to terms with the fact that we have to live in between the two, tradition and civilizations, but I compliment you again for this. This is really, really wonderful that you brought it up, this idea of where we can be able to scrutinize the Proverbs and how it was said. So my name is Joseph and I'm done talking. Man, thank you, Joseph. Uh, this is Simon speaking. I'm grateful for everything you just said and uh, I would love you to be involved. You know, we do this daily 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have the ability to have you on, on YouTube so that you can also be seen because we want to live stream this to our community members who can't be on clubhouse uh, and also have it in ways that we can share it uh, and and build this community of african people globally that are grounded in our culture you know um so i'm really grateful and i also want to encourage everyone in the room this room is filled with movers and shakers so i just want you all to tap in with nkem uh, follow her and, and DM her. Let her know if you're interested in helping us uh, make this daily African Proverbs grow because uh, this is a powerful space. In fact, let me play for you guys a clip from Kenya. I was in Kenya. No, let's hear from Sarah first. Uh, I'll play the clip after Sarah speaks, but when I was in Kenya, I talked to elders, I talked to people in the community and they were share I was showing them videos of what we are doing, you know, with the daily African proverbs and, and they just loved it a lot. And that's for me that's what is important. For me it's not about the audience, the number of people in this room, uh, or the number of views on YouTube or uh, whether you know my podcast gets a sponsorship as a result of the impact of this work. I'm just doing it so that the, the people that um, value these proverbs can engage with it and, and that's the satisfaction that I get. So this clip is just as a result of people sharing their own proverbs once they saw our discussion. And these are people that don't typically go to the internet but they miss these conversations too. So the fact that we're doing it here is really, really, it's just nice even if nothing comes out of it. So I'll introduce Sarah Ali, who is an amazing leader, and uh, she's focusing on the business of fashion, art, and architecture. And uh, you know, you can find her in the in Africa and the Middle East. Oh, and she's she's in luxury market in both regions. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's always a pleasure being with you, and I'm just grateful that you're here with us. The mic is yours. So kind. Um, I actually, uh, gosh, where do I start? So my, my grandfather was a playwright, and growing up, I um, I'm from Sudan, and so uh, growing up in London, my relationship with African proverbs, um, I used to bring back pieces of Africa with me, of Sudan with me, um, in written form in my books, in my journals. And so um, African proverbs are particularly uh, special to me because of my grandfather dedicated his life to telling African stories. And your tone, your literally your voice, Simon, um, literally makes me feel homesick many times. I don't think I've ever told you this, but usually you and I are in. I'm arguing with other people, so I never really show show my my soft or my kind side. Um, as for this um, proverb today. Uh, yeah, I would take it down the, the road of leadership because 
I find it unusual and interesting that um, it's about hunting and gathering and this bow and this arrow, which is about might and strength and and uh, almost, um, you know, feeding, like, you know, like bringing something back home. Again, I don't know if I'm talking as a, a diaspora who's homesick for Sudan or um, and that's how I, I see it, that there's this power in, in, in this particular weapon, right? And it's so traditional. Um, and, and that he, it says he loves, right? Did you say that? Did he, Simon? Yes, yes, yes. He says... He loves, uh, yeah. Yes, he loves. Yeah, which is I think is unusual because he doesn't have to love it, right? I think love is quite an unusual emotion to have. Like this is this is a task, right? You go out, you hunt and you gather and you come back and you and you feed your tribe. So um, I, I find it interesting that it's talking about um, love, that there is that love emotion. And so to me, as an Afro-Arab, I, I have four brothers. I grew up saying it, things are not fair and, and being told, Sarah, sit down, go inside, you know, stay out the sun, <laughs> you, you're talking too loud. And now I, I work, um, like you said, in, 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 a, in an environment where I have to learn to speak up. And I'm usually the only woman and usually the only person of color. And um, the other day I called, sorry, if I'm, it, tell me if I'm waffling, but this is exactly what this thing touched my heart so much. I called my, 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 my dad's sister passed away uh, about three weeks ago and I called to give my condolences. Um, one of my a great aunt answered the phone and she said to me, my dad comes from very simple, humble beginnings. And uh, she said to me, I, are you still, are you st still standing fighting with men? And I said, yes, <laughs> I work in parliament, by the way, I, I, I petitioned for African rights and, and equality and transparency, um, you, you know, for the global south, not you know, in my own humble way anyway. And, uh, but she, she said to me, um, you still driving, and I said yes. So in her in her language, in her way, for me to drive like a car is something very masculine, and and she wants me to not do that, not because she wants to hold me down, but it's just it's just not working for her. Um, and so I, I love this proverb in that it's celebrating those that stay home, you know, or stay close to the heart, just like those that. Um, you know, take that moonshot that go up in the air because I work with so many people who, who want to be that star in a company or in the board of directors who want, you know, they want the blue tick, they want the pay rise, they want chief executive, but it's usually the people who, who stay and do the grind, the hard work that nobody sees that are really the ones holding the whole thing up. So uh, listening to it, and maybe I've overthought about it, it's a, it's a concoction of who I am really. It's like m many contradictions. Am I the tomboy girl that shoot, wants to shoot up and, you know, that leaves the nest or, leave, or goes further from the heart <laughs> and, and, and ventures far? Or am I, um, you know, the one that's like a homebody who's usually homesick and really I do work that I love and, and it is a lot of fighting, but even though I'm not really particularly saving anyone's life, but it's, it's, um, but just like, you know, I can sort of say, gosh, that's really small minded with all respect to my great aunts and say, you know, are you still gallivanting around London? Are you still driving? You know, are you still standing with men? At the same time, um, I, I went to one of these meetings recently for this um, crisis happening in Ethiopia and uh, to, to sort of hold me down or to patronize me. Uh, one of the high commissioners um, said to me, where is my boss? Yeah, he was sitting waiting and I was waiting and I'm sitting waiting and he was like it took like it was only three four minutes but it felt like forever and I knew what his problem was and he was waiting for the boss to come and so that we can start the meeting and it took me great great satisfaction to tell him I was his boss um so yeah I uh in in an ideal world I'll I'll be the one that stays close stays home but Mm, nah, so it's much more fun to be the, you know but it's nice that the archer loves both because at the end of the day I've always wanted my parents uh, approval but it's really hard to do that when you're a tomboy and you've been raised with boys and you have an African heart but um, you know a British education you feel like you have a equal right to be everywhere um, yeah that's my interpretation of that I don't know if I've overanalyzed it but you've really touched my heart probably because I'm extra sentimental at the moment with uh, losing my aunt, but uh, it's always a great excuse and a pleasure to be speaking with you, Simon. I'm sorry, and I'm done speaking. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. This is Simon speaking. I loved uh, how you summarized that if you have an African heart and a British education, you feel like you need to be everywhere. And, and that's, that's a, a powerful summary of everything you just shared. Um, and, you know, I have so much love and respect for you. So thank you for being here. I would love to actually have a longer conversation with you. So I DM'd you so that we can host you as a guest here sometime in the near future. You know, we've hosted Zizi in the past. Let me see who else is in the room here that we've hosted as a guest. Actually, just Zizi. So I would actually love to, you know, invite you all to DM me or DM NKM if you're interested in being one of our special guests. Normally, um, you know, we invite guests and we discuss these proverbs, but we also discuss the work that you do, uh, the impact that you've had in the world. You know, for example, I've hosted Zizi, who is an author, and we were able to read a number of excerpts from her book. Uh, I have hosted um, Jane I Do, who uh, was, a, was the Minister of Communication during Nelson Mandela's uh, time as the South African president. Uh, you know, I've hosted BN from Saudi Soul. If you know uh, Saudi Soul, you know, it's one of the biggest uh, bands in Africa, but they're from Kenya. Um, yeah, so join me if you want to be a guest. I really want to uh, in invite you to do that. But now I want us to just um, listen to this clip I was talking about. Uh, and then we'll, once we listen to it, we will get back together and share our closing remarks. So give me one second. Greetings, everybody. As you know, I am also, you know, looking for new proverbs for the daily African proverbs while I'm in Kenya. And I'm also looking for interesting people doing interesting things, but just centering my time with them on African proverbs and just a quick lesson about what they do. So behind me, I have, you know, uh, community members that are also partnering with One Vibe Africa and Young Generation Center, uh, and they're running a computer program, particularly they're doing graphic design. Uh, and, you know, in Seattle, I work a, with a lot of amazing designers from Mujale, who is from Zambia, and a part of the Black, Black Dot movement to Adrian Sims, who is uh, the graphic designer for the city of Tacoma. When you see this, you should know that we have opportunities to collaborate with these two gentlemen and their program. Please introduce yourselves. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for this. Uh, on uh, One Wave Africa, I'm Gordon Obiambo. I'm the director of uh, Skill Up Training Institute. Uh, Skill Up uh, Training Institute, uh, we focus on youth empowerment. We train on uh, computer, specifically on uh, graphic design. We also have uh, other technical courses which we offer to youth so that they can get skills and go out there and earn a living for themselves. We have hospitality, uh, hospitality which we give them uh, basic skills in uh, areas of uh, hotel management. We also have hairdressing and beauty where we train them to go and work there as uh, hairdressers, beauty therapists, and uh, other, other, other things which are associated with, uh, with the beauty. So um, uh, to think about uh, an African proverb, uh, specifically a Kenyan duo one, I can talk about Tuan Achiel or Kriem Wasigu. Loosely translated as one brave person cannot defeat an enemy. And mm -hmm. this, is, um, this is a proverb which uh, is meant to encourage people to come together, to work together. We work together so that uh, when you when you are alone, you cannot like uh, make any progress. But when you become, when when you, when you come one, when you come as a team, then chances of you succeeding are, are very high. So uh, that is the problem which which uh, I wanted to share with uh, with us today. I love that. Tuon achiel okneegu. Okriembu wasigu. Tuon achiel okriembu wasigu. Yeah. You had the interpretation there, and let's introduce this other brother here. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. This is Philip, this is Philip Olo. Uh, I'm also uh, I'm the hospitality facilitator here. Uh, I, facil I facilitate hospitality management uh, within this uh, compound. Uh, our institute is called Scale Up Institute. We are calling uh, youths to come so that we, we, we give them the skills that can help them secure job opportunities outside there. 
So uh, uh, I have a proverb to today, a new proverb. Uh, it says, Chakochan uh, loyalty kajuaga. I don't know how I can loosely translate that. Uh, it means, uh, uh, how, how can I translate if that? You, if you start early, you don't have to, to go to the witch doctor to seek solutions to whatever you're pursuing, right? Yeah, so uh, that, that, that's calling uh, upon our youths that uh, mm -hmm. the, the earlier the better. So mm -hmm. you better uh, start earlier, you know, uh, the more you wait, mm -hmm. the more the responsibilities are, are coming up. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you wait that I'll go to school, mm -hmm. maybe uh, if I'm 30 years or uh, later on, mm -hmm. responsibilities are coming uh, and uh, are coming your way and uh, you may not get the opportunity to pursue what you wanted to pursue in your life. So uh, we as a scale up institute, we are calling upon our youths who are outside there who maybe never Anyhow, uh, that's a clip from from my recent trip in Kenya, and I just wanted to play it and then get uh, thoughts from everyone on stage. I also want to invite anyone else in the audience to just raise your hand if you want to join us on stage. We've been discussing an African proverb from Nigeria that says, The archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands. This is one of the longest proverbs we've discussed uh, here in the Daily African Proverbs uh, in, in terms of just how much it's a mouthful, you know. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I also shared a clip from two, two gentlemen that, uh, you know, we, we work with. So their organization partners with One Vibe Africa, which is an organization I founded um, in Kenya. Uh, but they shared with us you know a few proverbs i just want to get your thoughts on the clip and then your closing remarks uh nkem and easy and joseph and sarah i'm grateful for your presence so maybe we'll start with nkem uh you know just your thoughts on the clip and then your closing remarks and then easy and joseph and sarah i'm going to turn off hand raising thank you all for joining us thank you so much simon and it was such a beautiful clip to just hear uh, the different individuals uh, contribute. And I really was attracted. My ears was attracted and my mind was attracted to the sounds um, just of the conversation and the different voices and uh, the background noise. I am uh, just blessed to just hear some of your interactions in Kenya. I just felt like I was there a little bit. And so I just love that authentic conversation and just looking forward to um, getting to experience that in person. It's such a blessing to be in DAP. And so to imagine that you got to do that in person was beautiful. And um, regarding the proverb, I spoiled <laughs> tomorrow's. And I just want to say that uh, today's reminds me, and it's really timely, to not get discouraged in the tasks that seem mundane or uh, tedious or that they're not yielding any fruit, um, but to love uh, that as much as I love the end goal, the target, or what gets me to the end goal, or even the speed of uh, the direction or the speed of the path that I go or the speed of, of uh, the speed that I go on the path to get the goal that I'm trying to get um, to not work to equally love both parts and so this proverb reminded me today to love both sides of um, growth and development and to rest in the process and not um, only focus on the end result and so uh, that's why I chose it. And my apologies, I was a little distracted coming in, still kind of getting settled in. So appreciate the grace. This is in Kenjika, and I yield the mic. Thank you very much, and Cam, for your words of wisdom and for your closing remarks. Hey, Easy, share with us, you know, your your thoughts about the clip. I know you're in Kenya, by the way, at the moment. And also share with us uh, just your closing comments. I will DM you shortly after this conversation, by the way.
Thank you so much, Simon, again. Uh, wow, I, I must say really like it's very uh, captivating and also inspiring to, you know, just uh, listening, when I was listening to that clip, um, I feel like this is such a beautiful thing that first of all, uh, this platform of daily African proverbs is doing. And I, I don't even know, like when you are starting, uh, Simon, uh, like uh, the vision that you had uh, for this, but looking at it where it is right now, uh, I can confidently say that like this is like i feel like there's there needs to be like more of these kinds of uh platforms uh because i understand and i'm convinced that there's so much richness uh that we have as african people there's a lot that we have uh in regards to what the world needs uh there, there are a lot of questions that the world uh, has that I feel like a good portion of the answers for those questions lies with us as the African people. And those answers are found in things like, you know, our proverbs. And so it's a beautiful thing to have, uh, you know, a platform where we can all just come together and talk about these proverbs and see like how they are, they are able to impact us and impact our generations to come. Because I remember when growing up as a young boy, uh, that's the time that I remember very well, like having an experience of uh, just sitting down and listening to proverbs, like from my grandfather, both my paternal and my maternal grandfather. But after they were gone, uh, you know, and then of course with the change of life and uh, us here, especially in Kenya, being quite civilized by the Western culture, some of these things just naturally began to disappear. But I love the fact that now we have an opportunity and I, I think even the fact that we are living at an age where I feel like we have uh, like our limitations as far as what we can do, not just now as African people, but as people in this world, uh, is, is way beyond. The limits are becoming lesser and lesser because of what technology and social media has given us. The fact that we're even able to sit here and have such a beautiful conversation, different people from different parts of the world is such a beautiful thing. So for me, I think my those would be my closing remarks, just to continue to encourage us to keep these conversations going because I feel like there's so much importance in what we talk about here every time we sit to uh, discuss about different proverbs and our interpretations on them. So let's just keep it going. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my brother, Easy. What you're saying is completely true. And that's what keeps, that's the fuel that keeps me back here for the daily African proverbs every day since January. You know, I've only missed it when I'm traveling to Africa or when we had Madaraka Festival, which we also had here on on, on Clubhouse. Uh, and it's true, it's really, really important that we work together to continue growing this. So I am really, really proud of NCAM. You know, today I want to praise you for being so amazing in helping me really keep this uh, daily African proverbs, uh, you know, going and in helping make it uh, you know become something that is more reliable you know um so thank you very much and i want to invite you all i want i'm looking for guests you know uh, every day i want to have a guest on youtube so that we can grow this uh community and every day the same guest who is on youtube is going to be our guest here on clubhouse you know um and that's the only way we can grow this uh, I also want to urge you all to check out Wisdom Club. You know, there's a new app very similar to Clubhouse that was founded by an African uh, girl that I met here on Clubhouse, actually. We used to be in the same rooms for a while, and I was really, really surprised to find that she started an app like this. So you should definitely uh, check out Wisdom app. Um, I think 
just even out of curiosity you should check it out but uh, for me anything started by an african and then started by an african lady i have to be behind it uh, by you know but with everything i have so that's why i am supporting dio's uh, new app it's really really cool now i want to pass it to joseph to share with us his closing remarks and also his thoughts on the clip that i shared earlier and also really i want to welcome everyone who just joined us on the stage uh, in the in the you know in the room uh, on clubhouse and also everyone who have joined us on youtube thank you so much if you're on youtube remember that we are discussing an african proverb that says the archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands we are in the process of closing our conversation today uh, and so we are just listening to closing remarks uh, and also i shared a clip of my time in kenya where i was talking to two uh, you know two young men who run a tech institute they train young people on tech and uh, creative um, you know skills so i was surprised that the moment i showed them the video of this conversation the daily african proverbs they were immediately excited and they were like i also have a proverb i want to share and uh you know i talked to a number of people and i'll be playing more clips like that every day uh, for us to you know have a conversation around those as well so joseph the mic is yours uh, thank you simon <clears throat> uh, it's a little bit windy but if the uh, network cuts off uh, guys just uh, please uh, do let me know uh, simon what i'm gonna say is that it's about time that africa rise up we rise up to the tune that we can be able to become powerful beyond measure and we can only be able to do that when we can be able to share we empower each others and we make sure that we share stories like the african proverb for instance this is a wonderful idea which we have both of us as african hold hands in order to support you and make sure that this dream become a reality where every week, each and every guest who's gonna come here can be able to share something that is, it has to be connected with the roots or the, 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 to empower someone. Because every day when I'm here, I learn. There's not a day that I come here and I don't learn. And believe me, you proverbs are storytelling. They are just similar. But when you tell somebody in Proverbs, like the brothers in Kenya, those were wonderful, those were powerful uh, words that they were using right there. And this is what we need to support and document this, because for us, we want to share to the world that African can be able to narrate their own story. How can we be able to narrate our own story if we do not support one another? Stories that I've been sharing in West Africa, stories that I shared in East Africa, the story that I shared in North Africa, Southern Africa. We need to empower one another. We need to capture this. We need to make sure that everybody comes on the round table and we put a document by supporting Africans for Africans. To be honest with you, this is what we are all talking, we are all preaching. We need to empower one another is we empower each others we create knowledge and what do they say about knowledge knowledge is power so we need to come around we need to make sure that these proverbs still continue and still being captured some way so that we can be able to tell our future generations my name is joseph i'm done i'm done speaking thank you thank you thank you very much my brother joseph you've you've shared really really powerful words and there, there are things that, you know, I, 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 live, I live for opportunities to collaborate, you know, and to continue growing. Uh, and, you know, I'm so happy that we connected. And, you know, the more we do little things like collaborating on a show like the Daily African Proverbs, um, the more we learn how we can do greater things. So I'm, I'm truly grateful and sarah i'll pass you the mic so that you can share with with us you know your closing comments and your thoughts on the clip i shared thank you so much thank you simon sarah speaking um yeah i love the clip i i absolutely loved it um and and like the sister um how do i say your name sorry please in Kemlika. is that right have i 
please correct me. I haven't said your name right. No, you did it right, but NCAM. Oh, I did? Yeah, NCAM. You can just say oh, NCAM. Really? I'm scheduling. I'm scheduling. No, no, no. Yes. No, no, no. Yes. Don't worry. We're That's perfect. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I was just like I was listening to the wisdom of the words. It was the background music. I was trying to work out is that a fan or is that a generator um, in the background? And that made me smile. Um, as for the wisdom of starting early, absolutely. And I think that's what we're all talking about here is a sense of urgency and a need to, for, you know, emotion, the love of the, the love that the archer had. Um, you know, emotion comes from motion. We have to move. Like, you know, I, I, I feel, okay, I'll be very transparent. I, I feel like an imposter in this room because, um, for this very same reason, because after I spoke last time, I was like, why did I bring up my edu British education? And I, I know that in many a time, um, speaking the way I speak and, and having the culture that I have, it's been an advantage for me to get jobs and to have leverage in decision making. But in a room like this, when it's purely about wisdom and it's purely about being African and authentic and being home, I feel very British. I feel far away from home and I have imposter syndrome because I feel like the way that I'm speaking is letting me down because I, I have an African heart but my the way I speak um, betrays me and and um, you know not that, that I expect any kind of boohoo but that's just like something that nobody really says out loud enough so um, yeah I love that you know this feels like a homecoming and to me the archer is is my father who um, you know, raised a feminist girl in a, you know, in an, an African Arabic Muslim girl amongst four boys, and allowed me to t go far to to take that moonshot, like I said earlier, but you know, to to have let me be one of the boys, but then, you know, for me to keep my heart centered and to stay home and stay close to base in the traditional. Um, you know, the traditional stereotype of, of a girl, um, you know, I've, I've, I've had the best of everything. And for that, I'm really grateful. But most of all, I'm grateful for this conversation. I'm humbled always to speak with you, Simon, and everybody else. Um, pleasure to hear your voices. And I hope to repeat this again. I'm sorry, and I'm done speaking. Hey, Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, you know, this is home. This is home. And, and you are part of you are part of the village and the village is a part of you, you know. <laughs> I think um, it. I, I was learning from a friend yesterday that sometime, you know, we run from, we, we run from things and then we find that we are actually running towards those things. You know, uh, this friend, this is a close friend, he was sharing with me yesterday that, you know, I used to run away from being a parent. I used to run away from being a responsible man. I used to run away from wanting like a steady job. But now I found, I found myself with all those things. <laughs> so uh, I feel like being an African, no matter how much educated you become, no matter, um, you know, your accomplishments, it's still in you and when when you're with people that uh, that take you there and uh, allow you to just be who you are as an African uh, and especially dissect African proverbs and really think about them together um, it, it feels good and sometimes it's challenging for me uh, and really even today when I was opening this room um, I was like, what am I going to talk about when it comes to this proverb, really? What do I know? <laughs> and then after I started talking, I found out that I knew something, you know. So everybody knows something. Everybody has value. And I just want you all to know if you're in this room, you have value. If you're watching this on YouTube, you have value. And that's why I do this, because I want to encourage myself every day that I have value and um, uh, and it's my responsibility to share African proverbs and African wisdom every day. And so it's also yours to engage with it and share. And just like the clip I was playing earlier, uh, you know, those guys didn't even know that I was going to ask them to share a proverb. I didn't even ask them. And then they shared. They knew that this is, this is a part of our story, you know. Uh, and if you look at many speeches that are not provided by, done by African people on TEDx, you find that they're using African proverbs. But if you look at 
African people giving speeches and uh, or being in platforms or places where they could actually use African proverbs, they are not, you know. Um, they so I, I think this is a really sh a, a, a big cultural shift that we are trying to participate in making happen, and I think this is really like Joseph was saying earlier. Uh, African proverbs are untold stories. They are stories that these conversations we are having here are now starting to just, you know, initiate the conversation around these stories that were never told. Uh, what happens after that, the actions people are going to take, the way people are going to transform their own lives, we don't know. But our work is just to initiate the conversation. I want to invite Shiman to Shima to share with us, Shima Star to share with us her thoughts on today's uh, conversation. I know I invited you on stage towards, um, you know, towards the end, uh, but I want to share with you what conversation we are having because uh, you are really the last person to share with us today. When the room started, we, we began by discussing an African proverb, which is what we do here every day. We, we've been discussing a proverb from Nigeria that says the archer loves the arrow that flies as much as he loves the bow that remains constant in his hands. So we've shared different meanings of it. Everybody shared what it means to them. And then I shared a clip. I was in Kenya recently. I shared a clip where I was, you know, having a conversation with two people they were not random people i was having a meeting with them and then i showed them the video of the daily african proverbs uh, we 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 filmed this for youtube and we are live streaming it as i speak uh, when they saw that they immediately wanted to contribute and they shared two proverbs uh, that i that i shared with the audience so i'll pass you the mic so that you can close us out and uh, really i'm grateful that you're here Thank you so much, Simon, for the invitation. Um, and I appreciate being here. My, I do, my parents and um, most of my family were born in East Africa, so we're East African Indians. Um, I've never been there myself, but I also have and feel, you know, connection there because there's history there. Um, it, that's an absolutely beautiful um proverb that you shared just now and thinking about holding on to a bow and I can picture this arrow flying I th it makes me feel and think about um you know having hopes and dreams but still remaining grounded um and to uh, to allow yourself to have the freedom of thought and dreams and hope um but to just remain grounded you know I, I don't that's pretty much where my head's going and also I followed my friend Sarah in here uh, so I was a little bit curious um I will be joining again that's been a really really wonderful room and thank you for having me up here Simon oh you're most welcome you're most welcome and uh, I just want to uh you know look through the room briefly and give a big shout out to you know Daryl and Alicia and Nikki and Bigoa and Wanda and Maud, Michael, Ra Rahel, Alex, uh, Samantha Udondem, nice to see you, uh, Mick, John, Dakohai, Roger and Mr. Oscar, nice to see you Mr. Oscar. I, I, I really wanted to see you in person when I was in Kenya recently but I could not make it happen. It will happen though. Uh, and also Shima, Sarah, Joseph, and Easy and Enkem, thank you for being here. We are going to end our room in just a few seconds. I really, really encourage you to uh, follow the African Father in America Club. Uh, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Simon Javan Okelo. And uh, if you missed any part of today's conversation, it's going to be on all podcasting platforms in the next hour. So you can check out the African Father in America uh, podcast but really make sure you follow and connect with someone in this room in the next 10 or so seconds as we are ending our conversation a big shout out to white label american podcast host uh, Raphael harry who is with us on youtube thank you so much i'm grateful and uh, have a beautiful beautiful day african father in america
tujikaze tujikaze jikaze tujikaze tujikaze jikaze Africa tujikaze tujikaze jikaze America tujikaze tujikaze jikaze